Full self-driving 12.5 has finally rolled out to our Model S with Autopilot Hardware 3, which is now considered a legacy car. So I thought I'd bring it out to my favorite place to stress test it. You can immediately see the ultrasonic sensors detecting things around the car, which is not something you've seen on this channel for quite a long time. And I got to admit, it's kind of nice being back in the Model S. But the question on everybody's mind is, since we know that Hardware 3 has a smaller model than Hardware 4, does it perform the same? And the short answer to that, unfortunately, is no. There are a few areas where I feel like Hardware 3 does struggle a bit more compared to Hardware for, but it is really close. The last video I uploaded with this car was about a year ago, and if you can just compare with how it's doing right now, getting through this parking lot with all these cars and pedestrians and stuff, it is a night and day difference. It still does do some awkward things here and there, like you can see we have our left-hand turn signal on, which in a parking lot typically means you're waiting for a spot, and uh, you can see it kind of makes the other person waiting for the spot a little bit antsy, and they get in there real quick. Then suddenly, the turn signal just turns off and it continues on its way. As you might know, turn signals are something I complained about a lot in older versions, and although they're a lot better now, they're still not completely fixed. You can also see some really trippy visualizations. It's almost like the instrument cluster of the Model S doesn't have enough pixels to render out the streets uh, of the freeway directly in front of us, so kind of odd. But honestly, the visualizations are becoming less and less important over time, especially since full self-driving went end to end. There are frequently times where the car is obviously considering something that it's not displaying in the visualizations. I was a little worried that a smaller model size might mean it's not as confident Confident, but I'm happy to report that that is not the case. It's still making moves like this and passing these cars on the shoulder, which I know some people don't like, but I love oh so much. I honestly think that the average person would have a pretty tough time telling apart Hardware 3 and Hardware 4 on 12.5. The majority of the time, it's very smooth and has very good decision making, but there are seemingly random moments where the car isn't quite as smooth as I'm used to, and this is where we get into some of the differences. This left-hand turn starts very smooth, but halfway through the corner, it adjusts its path to swing out wider, almost like it's nervous about the curb to our left. You can even see the moment it adjusts its path in the visualizations. And I know this is seemingly small, but this isn't something that happens very often on Hardware 4 and does seem to happen pretty frequently on Hardware 3. Another thing I've noticed is a pretty large increase in what I would consider random slowdowns. Like you see right now, we're slowing down pretty dramatically, just knocked off half the speed for pretty much no reason, at least that I can see. And just a little bit further up the road, you can see it again slowing down for this crosswalk, even though there's no pedestrians around that could be entering this crosswalk at the time, gets all the way down to one mile an hour there. Definitely not ideal. And it's not like I don't experience random slowdowns on Hardware 4, they're just very rare. And in my initial drives with Hardware 3, I'd say it actually happens fairly frequently, at least through roads like these. It often feels like the car is almost second guessing itself. You can see it slow down halfway through this intersection. It almost feels like it thinks it missed a stop sign there or something. And I've also noticed a couple situations where the car seems to lack the proper context context of what's going on. Like this person is about to back into their driveway, but as soon as they pull forward, it thinks they're getting out of our way, which does cause a disengagement to avoid an awkward interaction. I feel like I've had a few of these scenarios happen on Hardware 4 and they've been handled much better. I almost feel like the larger model size gives it a little bit more context about what's going on. And funny enough, I re-engaged full self-driving and you can see it doesn't immediately start moving. You can hear it kind of pressing and releasing the brake pedal. Doesn't really seem like it knows quite what to do here, but in the end it does get going by itself. And of course, a little bit further up the street, we have another example of a seemingly pretty random slowdown at an intersection before getting back up to speed. I realize that I've spent the first half of this video talking about the flaws that I'm seeing on Hardware 3 because I know that's probably what you're most interested in. But I gotta say, if you compare the flaws that we're seeing right now compared to the flaws that we were seeing on these same roads with this same car just one year ago, 
they are laughable. We've gone through this same roundabout many times, and what used to be a stressful experience is now handled effortlessly. The path that it takes and the follow distance for other cars and the way it kind of ignores lane lines and drives in a natural way is just seriously next level. One of the most exciting things about 12.5 is the way that it's able to anticipate the movements of traffic. Like look how early it's continuing through this unprotected left here behind that other car. This is one area where Hardware 3 feels just as good as Hardware 4. It's also very good at staying extremely smooth, even in tough circumstances like when there's cars coming around this corner. No awkward steering inputs or harsh braking or anything like that. Even taking the racing line through this next corner. This is definitely the Max Verstappen way to go through this corner. Pretty unbelievable. And I wasn't kidding when I said it takes lane lines as more of a suggestion now. Watch up here where we gain a little bit of speed and it's literally just driving more centered in the road and ignoring all the lane lines, taking the smoothest path possible through here. If you go back and look, the lane lines are actually worn down in those same areas from humans doing the exact same thing. And I gotta say, a lot of times 12.5 feels way more human than robot. And another example of staying smooth when other versions wouldn't have, you can see that car was pulled out pretty far and it does slow down pretty considerably to make sure it can make it around this corner, but no harsh inputs whatsoever. And here where you can see there's a person with their door open off to the left, just gradually slowing down, making sure that it's safe before continuing on, no problem. And at the risk of repeating myself, I just gotta say again that I love the way that 12.5 is ignoring all these lane lines and decides to take the most natural path possible through all these corners. Also much more natural feeling around human drivers in these tight streets. You can see it slows down a little bit, but very gradually, because it knew that they were about to get out of our way. Sometimes even a little too naturally, you can see this truck coming into our lane a little bit, and it it doesn't react hardly at all, getting really close to that truck and other traffic. I mean, it turned out fine, obviously, but the confidence it has in some of these situations is pretty surprising sometimes. Here's another example of a turn that the car used to struggle with a lot in some of my previous videos. We've been through here a lot and it used to stop every time and do awkward steering inputs and this time absolutely none of that. I mean I guess I shouldn't be surprised. I've been driving 12.5 for a while now and I know how smooth it is but there's something about being inside this Model S where I've taken in this area so many times. It just feels extra impressive because I I've spent so much time on this channel complaining about the harsh inputs through these areas and honestly that's why I take the car through these areas is because it has to deal with unexpected things that are always waiting right around the corner. And as you can see by the way it's handling a lot of these scenarios with these pedestrians and stuff it has just never been handled better. Training off human data really has made full self-driving feel like a much more polished product overall. Even when dealing with the unexpected, like it cutting this corner a little too tightly and then getting surprised by a car approaching, it stays really smooth. And it staying smooth like that gives me the confidence that I need supervising this thing that it's making the right decision and it actually knows what it's doing. And there's an even crazier example right up here. There's an oncoming car directly in front of us and approaching us fairly quickly. And instead of slowing down or hitting the brakes, it continues through and threads the needle here and goes right around. Having the confidence to go head on with another vehicle because you can see a gap at the end that you can fit into is not a skill that most human drivers possess. You can see it waiting a little bit longer at this stop sign to make sure the cyclist to our left actually stops because most of them don't, which is fine. And also giving the cyclist to the right plenty of room to go around him, making him extremely comfortable. Also showing some really good anticipation skills here where it sees a cyclist ahead and some traffic coming and it slows down preemptively and then waits for it to be clear before passing. Yet another skill that the vast majority of human drivers lack. 
I also captured this pretty incredible moment where there's a child cyclist off to the right who is getting onto their bike but swings their bike towards the road and you can see full self-driving takes no chances and comes to a full stop. This is undeniably life-saving technology and just because it has moments like that where it seems a little bit too skittish of some pedestrians and might break more than some people's tastes, that doesn't mean that it's scared of pedestrians as you're going to see in this clip. You can see it waits for the person in front of us to cross the street and then she begins crossing to the other side but full self-driving continues behind her and kind of follows her as she's walking something i didn't think i'd ever see full self-driving do like seriously if you told me one year ago the last time i did a full self-driving video in the model s that it would be behaving this naturally around pedestrians i don't think i would have believed you I know some may disagree, but I think that was very well handled. And before I get into the other two, what I would consider non-critical disengagements I had, I just wanted to show you a couple more areas that impressed me. This is another roundabout we've been through before that used to be sketchy and just look at the speed and the path now. Absolutely perfect. Seems to be a pretty common pattern. The car is just handling these things way better than ever before. I remember not that long ago, a situation like this the car would be slamming on this brakes jerking the steering wheel folding the mirrors on its own and absolutely no drama whatsoever now and even though i think the performance on hardware 4 is a bit better than hardware 3 hardware 3 is still leaps and bounds way better than any other driver assistance system that you can currently get i mean if you compare this to mercedes level 3 mercedes looks like a complete joke it has a zero percent chance of getting you to your destination. So I did have three disengagements in this drive. The first one I already showed you and the last two are pretty non-critical, but the first one happened when we were leaving the area that you just saw us pull into. You can see there's a curb directly off to our left and the path planner looks like it wants to shift to reverse, but the car isn't allowed. And very similarly to my initial review of 12.5, there's times where the car almost feels like it thinks it's in reverse and starts moving forward and then slamming on the brakes, which feels very uncomfortable. Looking off to my left, it actually was going to go around this curb and it wasn't as close as I thought, but when the car is jerky like that, it just doesn't give me the confidence that I need to let the car do it on its own. The next disengagement was in very similar circumstances where it's turning right here and you can see there's a curb off to our right and from the driver's seat, I actually kind of lose track of where the curb is. So the car is doing everything properly here and it's creeping out for visibility and stuff. But once traffic clears and it was ready to proceed, it started turning the steering wheel all the way to the right, which made me think we were a lot closer to the curb than we actually were. The Model S is also a very wide car, so better safe than sorry. But yeah, that was it for disengagements on this drive. Very different experience than just one year ago. The other pretty incredible thing is that there were zero pedal overrides. There was never a moment, except maybe when it was waiting for that car who had already parked and it wasn't proceeding on its own. There wasn't really any moments where I felt the need to override the accelerator pedal and make the car go faster. Overall, I gotta say, I am very impressed with 12.5 on Hardware 3. Is it as good as Hardware 4? No, not yet at least, but it gives me high hopes that Hardware 3 is going to continue getting better and better. Speaking of which, there's a way to make yourself better and better at all kinds of things with this video sponsor. Brilliant makes you a better thinker and problem solver by providing thousands of interactive bite-sized lessons on just about anything you're interested in, including AI, math, physics, programming, data analysis, and so much more. Instead of just being shown how something works, like watching a lecture video, the lessons on Brilliant get you hands-on with it, meaning you actually play around around with the ideas, which really helps with digesting and retaining the information. This method of learning has been proven to be about six times more effective than watching lecture videos, something I can attest to because for me, things don't really sink in until I get hands on with it, which you're doing at Brilliant all the time. These lessons really do make building knowledge on complex subjects extremely easy, and it kind of gamifies learning. You can spend just a few minutes a day and level yourself up very quickly, which also makes you a better thinker in general. 
You can get everything Brilliant has to offer free for 30 days and also get 20% off their annual premium subscription by using my special link in the description. A big thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video and until next time everybody, bye.